Hello, Knights fans. Back with this week's edition of the FDU Men's Basketball Report. Joined, as always, by head coach Greg Granda. Coach, let's start off. Congratulations, first of all. Career win number 200, 75 of which have come here at Fairleigh Dickinson University. What does it mean uh, as you look back on your career to, to reach another milestone? Well, that Bob Hurley can sleep well at night <laughs> and Adolf Rupp and all the great coaches. But, no, it's, a, it's an accomplishment, um, and it just brings you back. It always brings you back which I don't like going too much, but I just remember my first win at Elgin Community College against Rock Valley Community College, and it was so important to me. Um, and that was 13 years ago. Uh, I remember my 100th win at UMass Lowell at Southern Connecticut, and I'll always remember this win uh, for a lot of reasons, but it was on senior night. Um, it was against Wagner. It seems like Wagner is a little magical. It brings out uh, the good in us and the good in Wagner. Actually, it was a great college basketball game. But yeah, it's 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 a number. It's important, but really more importantly is we've won nine out of eleven games, um, and February's been a good month for us, and March has been historically. So it's exciting personally, but a lot of good players helped me. I didn't score a point in any of those 200 games, but uh, you know Darnell and and Mike and Sid and Mustafa and Matias. And going back to Lowell, Akeem Williams and Antonio Bivens and Robbie Walton and going back to Cabrini uh, and Elgin Community College. I don't even remember that far back, but a lot, a lot of good, good. Ryan Clark, I got to mention him. He's just one of the great ones from Elgin. And um, it was just uh, it's, it was a special night, but more importantly, it was a great win for our seniors. Yeah, you mentioned the seniors. It does seem like it always works out that Wagner is here for a big game or we're at their place for a right. big game. But three-game winning streak, you said it right, 9 out of 11. You have a good shot at the one seed possibly You're sitting in the second place in the standings. But you celebrated senior day, and those two seniors, specifically Darnell Ledge and Mike Holloway, have really come on down the stretch. Right. Darnell had a career-high 32 last week. Mike, Thursday, Sacred Heart, 35 points. He yeah. wins NEC Player of the Week. Talk about as these guys, as their careers start to wind down, as it means as a coach to, to celebrate milestones with them. Yeah, it's really, it's just, it's fun to sit back. And uh, I told him in the beginning of this senior year, I don't want to holler at them. And I did holler at them some. But the last two weeks, I don't have to holler. And I can enjoy, because I, I remember being a senior and, and kind of knowing the drill and knowing what to do. I never had 35 or 32. But I'm uh, just happy for them because they have ownership of the team and, and this team is winning. Uh, right now we have to continue to win, but they're our leaders. And I think it's just a testament to our entire program, from my assistants, the managers, Nick Tucci, uh, that success after four years um, is, is really important. It shows that well, you know, what you do every day matters and, and the culmination is success. And we have more success that we want, but the personal success that they've achieved and team success has been really, really special, not only to me, but to our university and to their families. Their families were here. It was just a tremendous, tremendous day. But now we got to get on the road and get back to work. But we enjoyed that senior day and I enjoyed the seniors. And Nadi Nasiri, even though he's not playing, is a huge part of our team. So it's it's all good, but it's uh, it's uh, it's it's time to move on and continue to win games. Saturday was definitely a great day to be a night, as you like to say. Uh, the three-point shot, we always touch on it. It just continues to go down for you guys. Right. You got Darnell Ed shooting 47%. He's fourth in the country in three-point percentage. As a team, you're at seventh, seventh overall in the country in three-point percentage. Right. Have you changed anything in practice? Or what's been the big difference to the efficiency from behind the arc? I, I, we definitely are shooting more regularly in practice. And I think historically, I've always been like we've been grinding it out and go up and down and play but we've kind of locked in a certain amount of time for shooting uh, not only our threes, but our twos and our post moves. And it's really a, a tribute to our players, but our assistant coaches. You know, our assistant coaches are in here endless hours uh, with our players. The gun, the machine, the gun is, is important. But this year, particularly, we've carved out time in practice um, to shoot the basketball. And I just remember the burgundy and blue game. I've got to mention this. All of our alums were sitting right here and they all asked me to a man, who's going to make, sh other than Dar Darnell, who's going to make shots this year? And I always say somebody's going to make them. And I, I, I think, you know, Mustafa Jones is the all-time leader. And now Darnell's the third. So, and Sid Sanders had 600 points. And 
So they can't blame me for not letting them shoot. You know, I'm, I'm the anti Al LaBalbo maybe because Al was such a tactician and defensive coach and tremendous world class coach. But offensively, I let these guys go. It's 2019, and that's a big part of the game. And quite honestly, to toot our own horn, Brian, we're in the elite status. If you're in fourth individually and seventh nationally, it's really that that's that's special, and it's all a testament to what we do, you know, every day here at, at work during practice. Yeah, definitely continue to put Fairleigh Dickinson on the map on a national level. There, I touched on it before. You're in the second spot in the NEC standings. There's still some seating for jockeying. You've locked up at least one home game here at the Rothman Center, where you're 11 and four this season. But as a coach, when you're playing so well, are you ready for the playoffs to start now? And are you or are you still looking forward to these final two games on the road? I love this trip. We won the, the NEC in 2016. There's only been two championship teams since then. It was Mount St. Mary's and LIU last year. The year we went, this was the trip, and it's a great time to get away, take a deep breath, and kind of win on the road or attempt to win on the road and get ready for the battles ahead. So I, you know, people were saying, well, now you got a really tough trip. We embrace pressure. We embrace the road. and. We're looking forward to it. Get on the bus, you have food, you're away from everything. You know you know the deal on the bus. And we have a chill team, a team that's really um, closer and closer on the floor and off the floor. But um, it's, it's a good road trip. we got to come back, and then, then Wednesday we throw it up. So it's, it's a lot of basketball to be played. Yeah, I think that's a great point. It's kind of a chance to take a deep breath, reflect on the season, play two more games, still obviously significant games in the right. grand scheme of things, but you know you have the home game here and you'll come back and obviously look to take care of business. I didn't even know that. Do we definitely have a home game? Yeah, totally. That's clinched. You have at least one home game. Yeah. Wednesday, what are we, Wednesday the 6th here now, at the Rothman? Right, yeah, right, breaking right, news here on the air. Yeah, Coach. Uh, no yeah, one so. told me. Why didn't you tell me that? I don't know. I, uh, I don't know. It must have been passing. Okay. It's in all my notes. I read it down yeah. a million times. I tell okay. everyone. But, yeah, yes, yeah, so you have a game here Wednesday, March 6th will wow. be the so NEC quarterfinal on this floor. Yeah, yeah, we're starting the process with that. There's been meetings, so uh, it'll be a great chance for everyone to come out here and, and cheer on the Knights in the postseason. And then lastly, I know their season's off. They had a little bit of uh, some scheduling changes, but our baseball coach, Justin McKay, big win against Seton Hall, played a tie against Dayton, a rare tie because, yes. of, because of darkness, but playing good baseball here. The young guys look good. Um, he's going to be on your show this week, so talk about what to expect with Coach McKay. No, he's, well, number one, he's, I didn't realize how young he was until you sit across from him for 15 straight minutes and I'm like God I'm old he's young he's excited their first my first win was at Rutgers and at Seton Hall his first win was home against Seton Hall so uh, I just lo I love the, the players on the team they're just great kids they're good they're good we got good freshmen so I just think you know when we succeed I think everyone succeeds when baseball succeeds when all of our teams do well it's just good for for everybody so, uh, you know, Justin, we have a little Drake music, so it's a hip-hop show. I hope people listen. And then, Brian, I'd be, I'd be really remiss in not mentioning the passing of Ken Verkins, who, to me, when I got the job here, I just have always viewed him as royalty at Fairleigh Dickinson University. He's a, a, a person that was an alum. He was a dean for... I, I, close to, he was here for 39 years. Um, he, he was just a great, great man. He was at our senior game on Saturday against Wagner. Um, he helped my wife get a job here and, and, and taught classes and as an adjunct professor. He's helped so many people in athletics and so many people just getting their education. He started, I'll never forget him telling me the story about him um, going and talking to Bill Barcells the giant football Hall of Fame coach about the Giants coming here and finishing their degree, and so many have, including George Martin, who is the captain of a Super Bowl team. Uh, the respect that Ken had from me, our program, and all of Fairleigh Dickens University was immense, and his loss is just really devastating to me personally uh, and to our university. So we just pray for his soul and for his wife Karen and his family, and we we remember him and we'll be playing hard you know for him this weekend
Yes, definitely. Our thoughts here from the athletic department go out to Dr. Verkins. Played an integral role in, in what Fairleigh Dickinson Athletics is here today, and, and he will definitely and surely be missed, but not forgotten with all the Amen. lasting impact he's had. So as Coach Renda said, though, it'll be on the road for two games here to close out the regular season. First up is Thursday night, Mount St. Mary's, 7 o'clock at Knott Arena. Then they'll head up to New Britain, Connecticut to face Central Connecticut in the regular season finale. That'll be a 1 o'clock start, so you can catch all that action on NEC Front Row. And make sure you head back to FDUnites.com.